Awesome. Okay. Well, again, thanks for joining everyone to this session. Um, welcome. Um, my name is Hayden. I'll give a bit of a more of an intro in a second, but um, just uh, I wanted to put together a bit of a talk around some basic business concepts in data and analytics for you guys. So the concept here, like I said, isn't to go into like uh, the minutia or granular detail into like using Google Analytics specifically or any analytics platform. But I thought it would be more beneficial to go through a bunch of concepts that either I've learned over time being in digital or when dealing with data or analytics, um, and rather give you a, a bunch of things that you can look out for or use uh, when you start using any, any data. Um, I'm hoping that a lot of the concepts can be used whether you're more advanced in analytics or you're just venturing into it or just uh, you know dipping your toe in the water. But um, yeah, on that note, um, please do ask questions as, as we go along. Um, especially if there's something that is unclear you don't understand. I'd rather stop on a, on, on a concept and clarify something if, if it doesn't make sense instead of going on and then uh, you know, lacking the understanding further on in the presentation. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to kick off in the meantime and uh, just shout if you've got any questions. I, I am looking at the, the chat on the left-hand side. I'll try to keep up with it. Um, uh, but excuse me if I, if, I, if I miss a few questions there. We will get to Q&A at, at the end. Um, but yeah, so just looking into the agenda for today, and please also, uh, I'm cognizant that I, I speak way too much. So if I am going too slow and we're not getting enough Q&A time, please just uh, just shout and I'll, I'll pick up the pace. Um, but uh, so I'm just going to do a bit of an int introduction of myself. I'm going to go through two key concepts with you around, uh, around just the digital world that we're living in at the moment and what it, it means for businesses. Um, I wanted to look at a process around marketing and just how the digital world works around, uh, you know, um, with regards to digital marketing and just general marketing. Um, I want to go through a few important considerations in working with data and just ways of thinking about doing analysis. Um, I have a few tools that I want to share with you around uh, uh, what you can use now to get some data and insights and, what, and uh, all of them are free. Um, and then I'll just uh, wrap up and we can get into some Q&A. Uh, stuff. So just starting off, uh, my name is Hayden. I'm a senior analytics and optimization manager in a company called Jellyfish. Um, what that means is I generally help with like the strategic side of data and analytics. So and what I mean by that is um, I sit with businesses and work out what they need to do with data, what is important to track, um, where the data needs to be. So for example, if they got a, a sales system and they got a website, how do we get that information together? So you can get some good insights from that. And just, uh, I, I work with businesses to do that kind of stuff most of the time. I have seven and a half years in the digital industry, starting off in paid media specifically, and then uh, a few other uh, nuances. And uh, yeah, I've landed up in analytics at the end of the day. And I would say I have 33 years as a dig digital technology user because uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that digital tech has been around since most of us, us have been born. Um, it's not just the invention of the, of the cell phone and magically you know, digital came into being. I think uh, there's a lot of tech that's connected um, and that we don't even think about it uh, you know, most of the time. So yeah. So again, I just wanted to start with two key concepts around just the world today and, and that we're living in uh, as far as digital goes. Um, first one being that digital marketing is not the same as marketing in a digital world. So I think uh, in the past, there's been this idea of a silo of you know, digital marketing as a type of marketing. And you, know, um, yeah, you venture into digital marketing when you decide like your budget, budget allows or um, you know, in a lot of big companies, there was like a tick box to say, hey, we need, to, we need to get digital marketing sorted. But in reality, it's not so siloed these days. Um, it's more of like a client-centric approach. So looking at the user as, as, the, as the, key, the key element. And I mean, marketing in a digital world is the fact that digital marketing and being in those spaces, digital spaces is, is, is a, a no-brainer now. It's part of almost every user's journey in almost any industry that they are going to be in touch with digital assets that you own, digital devices, you know, all that. And it's just another element of doing good marketing now. It's a, like a, a like non-negotiation factor. I mean, probably one of the cheaper and easier uh, ones at that. Um, uh, take that e easy comment with a pinch of salt, of course. <laughs> 
Um, so just a few other concepts like uh, to reinforce that. I mean, I, I don't think I need, need, to, need, need to say it, but we're living in a multi-device lifestyle. I mean, how many times have you been sitting at a TV you know, while you're sitting on WhatsApp, while you're also checking your Instagram, et cetera? We were always in touch with multiple devices. Um, sorry, somebody says they can't see anything on their screen. Uh, I am sharing a presentation. Uh, can everybody else see this? Yeah, I can see this. I don't know why she can't see, actually. Are you um, watching this through your phone, Ijama? Let me try. Oh, I'm, I'm using my laptop. Oh, I can see it, actually. I, I'd recommend maybe just a refresh, rejoin. It sometimes helps. Also, okay. I've switched off my, okay. my I camera. I think I'll so... do that. I'll go out and come back in. Perfect. Cool. In the meantime, I'm going to just continue. Uh, I know this will be recorded and that. So, um, so yeah, of course. So, sorry, what was that? The screen. I'm not seeing the screen. Okay, let me. Let me I can. Uh, maybe I should just try and present again. Oh, is anybody else having that issue? I can totally see your screen. Okay, uh, if you are seeing it, so I'd I'd recommend anybody with a camera on maybe switch it off, and then also if you can't see it, maybe rejoin. Um, it should help. Cool. Golden, I see you've rejoined. Have you, uh, can you see everything? Yes, I can. I can see the screen. Thank you. Perfect. So yeah, just, uh, I'd recommend jumping off and coming back guys. If you, if you, if you can't see anything. Cool. So just continuing on, uh, on this point, just for the sake of time. I mean, like, like I said, we, we're living in a multi-device lifestyle. We're looking at multiple screens at the same time. I can't tell you how many people have multiple devices. I mean, thinking about, uh, I think most of Africa, especially South Africa where I am, I mean, there's a lot of people, you'll have, uh, you'll have your main personal device, you'll have your business phone, and then you'll have your other side job business phone. <laughs> um, so everybody's got multiple, multiple um, devices. And on, on that note, I mean, realistically, how many people are, are going through a consumer journey where it's only one device or one step. I mean, when was the last time you saw a billboard or a digital ad and then the next step you took was, oh yeah, I'm gonna go in store and buy. These days it's about research, it's about going on different different um, platforms, you know, going out to social media, et cetera, and really like looking at in different places before making a purchase decision. The next point uh, under, <laughs> under my first point is the fact that we are cyborgs. Um, just a very weird thing to say. Um, and I think the, the, the point here is that in the past, people always thought about that idea of, you know, like, you know, cyborgs and, you know, combining a technology and getting stuff implanted in you. And it's a very sci-fi kind of idea. But in reality, I would argue that our devices, especially a mobile phone, is just an extension of our body and our capabilities. If you think about the world today, I mean, it's a little bit crazy to think about this, but I would argue that you require a phone and uh, internet and internet access as a minimum in order to uh, get around the average world or life experience. So, I mean, how much in, in the modern world with dig, dig, digital ecosystems, how much would you not have access to if you did not have connectivity? So I, I argue that having a device and using it is an extension of your abilities as a human these days, which is a bit of a crazy one but it shows you how ingrained digital devices and digital spaces are in people's lives. And then finally, on, on that, that first point, uh, we expect services to come to us. I mean, if you think about it these days, especially with COVID, I mean, how, how frustrating is it, you know, when uh, you want to look into like a product or something and you go to a brand's website and they don't have a listing listing of, you know, an e-commerce site or a listing of all their products and features and that, you know, it's almost like this expectation that, you know, they should have all this data and, uh, you know, it, it needs to be presentable to you and you need to be able to access it. Or being annoyed when you search for a business and you can't find them, you know, on Google, Google My Business or on, on Google Maps, etc. It's, it's like, it, it feels like a given these days that all these things should be in place and an expectation for a, for a business to provide this to a consumer. So that's just how, how important I think uh, digital the, the digital devices are now in the digital marketing world. 
the second concept just in general that I wanted to go into was just around, it's more of a business uh, type thing, but is what is the core purpose of a business? And I mean, I would love to put this question to all of you watching. I mean, does anybody have any, any thoughts on what the, what the core purpose of any business is or should be? Feel free to type it if you want. Feel free to unmute your mic. <laughs> cool. Golden says to provide a solution, Etienne, to turn a profit and to provide service or product. Good answers. Any other thoughts? I'll give it 30 more seconds. Cool. I'll check. I'll check for other comments in a bit. But what I would say, and just also from a, from a, a, a few bits of reading around economics, and that is, most most economists would say the core purpose of a business is to create and maintain competitive advantage. It's a fundamental principle of business. The idea is that you should be creating something better than your competitors, some unique selling point. And that is what will bring your profit. That is what will bring your shareholder value. That's what will bring, be your solution, et cetera. So the idea is that you are doing something better, cheaper, quicker, better, uh, a better product, et cetera. That, that is what you should be aiming for as a business in order to, 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 to make profit, profit. And the interesting thing about competitor advantage is that whenever you look up why uh, or how to increased competitor advantage or how to work on this as a business. Um, the large majority of the recommendations are either based in or would benefit from data. Uh, you know, it's about knowing a process, measuring and improving on a process or finding efficiencies in how you do things. Without recording some information, you don't know where you are to benchmark and you don't know where you need to be or if you're improving or not. So I would argue that data is incredibly important when backing the idea of a competitive advantage and building a business. So on that point, I mean, I, I would like to uh, say to you that you should really treat your customer data and what they tell you as seriously as you treat your back bank account. In this, in this idea, um, arguably, you can fuel your competitive advantage and hence your business and your actual profit through knowing data and using it better than your competitors. Um, so I, I, I personally feel that data is a lot more valuable than, than, than what most people think. And that analytics in and of itself is, is, is again, not just a ch checkbox activity. It's something that every business should be doing. So to bring this back to, to, to this presentation, I mean, of course, digital assets are arguably the cheapest and most agile platforms to, to tailor your offering on while measuring them. I mean, that's, that's why we, we talk about, you know, web analytics mostly and, you know, social media and all the different kinds of platforms because they're really easy to measure, they're easy to change and, and tailor and craft journeys on. So on that note, I wanted to go into a bit of a process approach around how we look at uh, business uh, marketing and uh, doing this especially online. So what I try to do here is uh, just to simplify to the best ability <laughs> that I could um, the steps and processes you'd want to do as a, as, as a business, especially in digital, in general marketing, but uh, especially in di digital marketing. So you'll, you'll notice at the top there, there's your product and service offering. There's an interplay always between refining and knowing your audience and crafting a journey. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you develop your product for somebody, um, you know, that, that, that is your audience. And the way to create a unique selling point or get competitive advantage or um, improve your product is generally uh, to either by knowing your audience better and feeding that into your product or um, crafting a better journey, which arguably is your, your product, how you deliver your product, whether that's on an online platform whether that's uh, how, you, how you provide a service, et cetera. But at the bottom there, all of this is backed by measurement. It's by testing uh, things. 
talked about uh, by activating your your insights or acti or uh, actioning the kinds of things that you've measured and iterating so doing this multiple times about small increments um, and uh, data allows you to to really optimize and develop these other steps at the top there your your actual product and audience etc so this brings me to the kinds of things that you want to, you need to consider when it comes to working with data, um, and probably the bulk of this presentation. And I mean, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to strictly put it this way, but this is probably the list of points that I would have wanted to know when I started in the industry. You know, when I started playing around with data and and really wanting to 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 find value in it. So I'll start off with the first point being start with a tracking plan. It is important as a business to know the data that you want to collect and plan for it and where it'll be used and by whom. And what I mean by this is that so often, especially me, I work in an, ag an agency and I'm working with multiple brands. People will come to me and say, cool, we need analytics. Um, you know, please go track our website and, uh, and, and, and that's it. And that's the brief. But at the end of the day, you can argue that your data and analytics people are going to be the core that core of your business. I mean, the data is going in and out, passing to different different decision makers, different levels in the industry. Those people really, really need to know about the business, you know, a lot more than most. So really starting with what your business does and what data you would need or what points you would need as like a minimum to be able to make decisions, what you know, to, to track a KPI, a key performance indicator, or to know that somebody is has has converted on your site, like become a sale, become a lead, etc. Like working that kind of stuff out at the beginning and where you will need that data um, is probably the best um, first step that, that that I could recommend. And when I talk about working with agencies, if you work with agencies, I would recommend um, partnering with them on a when it comes to data. Because you can't expect an agency to magically know your complex business and your industry, and especially if it's niche, um, as well as you. And to know what really counts in data, you need to know the business. So an example of this, just a really simplified one, is if we're talking about web analytics and tracking a website, um, a good start would be to say, uh, you know, get some web page tracking uh, on the site. So this is our Jellyfish website. So it'd be really good to know, just have some tracking there and know what pages people are going to, what people are seeing, where they're engaging, et cetera. Even better would be to say, you know, somebody saw these pages, but also we know that they got to a form on the site and they submitted their details and they actually became a lead to us. Um, that, that, that's definitely a, a, an improvement on the kind of data we planned on, on, on getting. But even better than that, so, or, well, best is get enriching that data that you're tracking, uh, especially planning for this. So instead of just knowing somebody came to a page and some of the details, you know, knowing something like, and they came from an online search ad, or they were a current user, or they were logged in um, on my site, or they, somebody that have pur has purchased something before, et cetera. You know? So you can see here that there's different levels of this. I'm not saying start from start from the the best, but this is definitely the kinds of way that you should be thinking when planning out what you need to measure. My next point would definitely be that you do not need to track everything. I think there's a common misunderstanding when uh, you know there's a buzzword big data and tracking everything and just making sure you have all the information everywhere. Um, I think there's a very big difference between big data and usable data, and especially how much data you can actually use in your own respect. Like, um, how much data can you crunch? You know, how, how much can you get through yourself? So I would argue that starting with your, like I said earlier, with KPIs, key performance indicators, what the main things that will give you the best measurement or benefit to your business, um, th th those should be your, that should be your MVP, your minimum viable product. Um, just enough to, say whether somebody uh, did a beneficial action on your website or on a, on a digital platform and that you can you know, attribute that back to some interaction they had previously or some ad advertising you had. I'll also note on this point that 
it is more than okay to track things later and temporarily. Not all tracking has to be on a website or on an app or date. Not every data point needs to be collected from the start. Um, sometimes you want to run a, a short term, you know, a piece of insight or or, or a kind of analysis, um, especially when it comes to user behavior on the site. You might not have known that you had you had a form that you needed to track that was only added later a year later than you started your tracking plan you know it, it's fine I, I don't think that anybody can account for everything at the beginning and you shouldn't you should start with your with with your the key points you need and then enrich from there the next point i think that's really important is the fact that trends take time i think a lot of the time we start tracking information on a website specifically uh, or in a business, and uh, the next day or next week, somebody will say, okay, cool, well, what is, what is the data saying? Uh, can we make decisions? And in some cases, that is a good timeline, we, a week later, but in a lot of cases, it isn't. Um, it's important in data. I mean, a very, there's a very big concept around uh, statistical significance, which basically talks about just having enough volume, enough enough data in a specific point to make a, a, a confident decision you know on um and 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 making sure that it makes sense and you have enough buffer with with, with this that it's not just a, a bunch of random people you know um that, that that you're taking a sample of so again this is why i say you should track your your kpis early so you can start um getting as much data for the main points that you, you need to judge how your business is doing online um, first. Um, and uh, and it, it's also very important to do those things early because even though to make your first decision, you might not need that much time, but eventually you're going to get to the point where you want to do, like, for example, your and your analyses or your and your comparisons for long-term investments. And... Uh, yeah, it's important to have that have that tracked early so you can do those year on year things uh, as soon as possible. So to exemplify this point, again, I just wanted to to put it into a very simplified form and say and show you this graph. Now, having a, a spot there saying you got four sales in January is is a good start. I mean, just being able to track 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 the details is is very good as opposed to not really knowing <laughs> how your business is doing. Even better is having a bit of time added to it. So having a comparison, you know, uh, from one month to the next, you know, uh, you, you have a benchmark or, 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 a, or a comparison to say whether you've gone up or down. Um, in this case, it looks like January either did terribly or February is really, really good. But my argument about getting enough time and, 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 and data is this best scenario where we have almost an entire year's data, and what changes to what you saw in those previous two slides is now we can see that January actually wasn't doing that bad. In fact, it's pretty average compared to compared to how your business does throughout the rest of the year. It was February that was actually the outlier, not January doing terribly. Um, so, I mean, in this case, you'd want to go and see what what you did so right in February. But it's definitely important to gauge how much information you need before making a decision, uh, especially on when looking at time, um, uh, time comparisons. The next point that I wanted to go into is just the idea that frame of reference is very important. So when I'm talking about frame of reference, I'm talking about comparing apples with apples. The amount of times uh, just working in analytics that um, we've, for example, been with a client, done an analysis, given them like a total amount of sales that we've recorded, and the client has come back and said, well, we can't trust the data. It's not accurate. Our systems say that actually we got two times the amount of sales. But then when, when we delve into it a bunch more, we realize, oh, that's because on, in analytics, or at least web analytics, we are only tracking um, online sales, um, we're only looking at certain parts of the website, um, but the client is looking at, you know, in-store sales too and, you know, uh, other sales mediums and neither of those data points are incorrect if you look at them in the right frame of reference. So I just think it's really important um, to always compare apples with, ap with apples and make sure what, the, what you're comparing to is within the same frame of reference. 
it, this often causes a lot of discrepancies when it comes to reporting back to clients or reporting back to, you know, business heads because they have overarching, you know, um, uh, overall stats of how a business is doing, but, um, but you're, you're specifically reporting on the performance of a very limited uh, spectrum. The next concept is just the idea that you don't know your customers as well as you think you do. And assuming that you do is pretty dangerous. Now, I will say that please take this with a pinch of salt. I do not mean that gut feel in a business and industry experience um, do not count. I definitely, just from working with small businesses and, 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 and starting up stuff, these are incredibly important um, and probably make you more agile and able to, to, um, to deliver on a product. But I would argue that all of your, your gut feels and, and your, uh, your experience is just stuff that you've proven previously by some form of data, whether it's just mentally some tests of did something work, did it not work, et cetera. So I just, my point here is just categorically that you should test your assumptions before making a decision. You should do some audience research. You should keep on asking questions, you know, of your, of your, your, your end user and see that you're keeping up with the times. Um, this is definitely one of those things that plays heavily into your competitive advantage um, that we spoke about earlier. Because at the end of the day, if you're trying to refine your product and, and, and make, add the best unique selling points, you really need to engage with the end user that's using your product. Um, as an example, um, Airbnb started out really small. The owners of Airbnb decided that they wanted to know how the users, the people listing their, listing their, um, uh, their apartments, et cetera, on Airbnb, how, how they found the experience. And they literally, I mean, granted, this isn't the most ethic ethical thing. They just showed up at, at, at the, the owner's houses and said, hey, can we get some feedback on our app? And th th they went door to door and that, that's pretty much how Airbnb refined their product offering and became the giant that it is now. So I'd also say don't underestimate the importance of communicating with your audience. And it's weird to, like, uh, to, to talk about that here, but don't, uh, I think one of the key points is that data is... Uh, that, that is still data, that is part of analysis. Analysis is not strictly just web data and that. It's about getting all the data points you can to reinforce the decision. I think to, to <laughs> just to uh, emphasize this point of not knowing your audience and decisions, ma decisions made without knowing your audience, you can look at <laughs> this picture pretty clearly. Um, not everything you design or how you design your product and offering may be the way that an audience uses it or expects it or finds it the most appealing. Cool. The next point would definitely be that bad data is worse than no data. So I always recommend stress testing any data that you have or any decision that you're making and just making sure that the data is solid and has a good foundation. This is also why I, I started off saying don't track everything at once. Don't try and get too much into a tracking plan and just sense check that your tracking is working or the data is coming from a good source. Merely having a lot of data isn't a good sign and that's why I say that bad data is, is, is worse because it's usually very hard to identify when your data is bad. You know, when you're not getting any data, you know, okay, well, tracking isn't working, um, data isn't coming through. But identifying that data is inaccurate is far, far, far more difficult. And just having an abundance of data, a lot of data coming through, often offers you a false sense of security because you think, okay, well, it must be working. There's a lot of stuff there. But it's very important to acknowledge this because it, bad data, like I said, is harder to diagnose. But it, making decisions off of bad data can take you down a rabbit hole, rabbit hole of bad uh, investments. Because if you make a decision off of bad data, you know, adm admirably, you're trying to use data to make a decision. You make a decision, you do what, what the data suggests in your business, and then it just perpetuates this, this, this feedback loop of bad data because you're optimizing to an incorrect you know, um, result. 
So it's just important to take a step back sometimes and just make sure that the data you're um, the data that that you're collecting is right and the sources is, is appropriate. I'd recommend doing things right the first time. And what I mean by this is, like I said, starting with that tracking plan and doing uh, and and investing in data as though it is a component of a component of your business. There's a concept in development and data called technical debt that I'd love to like just address here. And technical de debt ex is this concept around the implied cost of reworking a solution that you put in place previously because it was easy, but wasn't actually uh, you know the best solution um, at the time. So what this means really is the and this I see this all the time uh, working with a lot of brands. A lot of people have put in put in place uh, tracking or you know platforms and and development in place that you know works for now and was quick to turn around and 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 was really um re really a lot easier now um, and thrown together quickly. But it costs them more in the long run to actually fix it when they need to do it better. And in tandem with my point around the fact that data takes time, if you take into account that if you track something badly the first time and then need to go fix it later, you lose out on all that historical data that you tracked and to cost another insight, you, you, you're going to have to wait for that data to accumulate again. So imagine you track something like, let's call it your sales for, for two years and you can do all your analyses year on year and then you work out actually sales data has been tracking incorrectly the whole time. Um, we need to retrack that now. The cost to your business isn't just the retracking, it's the two years that you're going to lose out on the data that you would have been able to compare and learn from. So it's just important to consider, again, don't track everything right at the beginning, but whatever you can track, I would recommend trying to do it as best you can. Um, yeah. I, mean, I think the, the a nice comparison here is uh, if any of you are, of you are into extreme sports or into especially like uh, motorcycles, whenever you go to a store and ask about safety equipment, um, the and you say you know what would you recommend me buying? I think most good salespeople would respond with the best that you can afford at the time. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not uh, it's not about that you need to go and invest all of your budget into just this, this one little thing, you know, analytics on the side or data collection. But definitely take it as a serious decision when you start looking at it in the frame of it supplying you your competitive advantage and do as best as you can at the time. Promise I'm almost done. Second last point, <laughs> um, data, data is everywhere. I think it's really important to, 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 to just think about this. I think a lot of the time when you talk about analytics, people just think web analytics, going on a website and tracking a bunch of people coming to a site and that kind of stuff. But don't forget that there is so much data out there that's free to look at um, and that you can you can accrue to make decisions in your, in your business. I think the most impactful analysis I've done just in, in my job at the moment in the last quarter has been off of just free data I found online and putting the right th the right insights together just off of what the South African market is doing um, for a business more than it was their internal data of sales or more than more than it was for um for their web analytics um, so just remember not all data seems like this crazy big data warehouse kind of stuff or this this accruing of like tons and tons of information there is so much out there like I mentioned about asking your your customers questions getting insights reports from categories, doing surveys, testing audiences, you know, there's, there's so much there. And just don't forget that all of that represents information that can be put into analysis. And finally, I uh, think I must stress this, that data and analysis is absolutely nothing without activation. It's really good if you're starting to collect data and you start doing analyses and you start cost getting insights from it. But if you stop at the point where you say, hey, that's a really cool insight about my business and, and then just leave it at that, you've wasted your investment. At the end of the day, you do analysis to improve 
in, in to, to improve uh, an outcome, whether it's finding efficiencies, whether it's building an audience so you can target them in digital marketing better, um, or change your product even, like I've said, you know, with, uh, finding competitive advantage through, through, um, through data. But when you do an analysis, the outcome should always affect um, you know, your, your business or, or an audience, or you should do something with that. I think, especially in analytics, it's not always this crazy insight or this crazy change all the time, but I think a lot of small increments over time provide a huge impact for a business. And, and that's, that I think is the last point I'm gonna leave you with when it comes to any analysis. Any questions from you guys so far? You've been very, very quiet, and uh, I just want to check that before I just go into the few tools that you can probably use right now um, and end off. Cool. I'm, I'm going to continue here. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm going to continue. I'll keep okay. it But yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to rush through this because I know that we, I've taken up way too much time already. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was just about to say, uh, Felicia has a question. I think she dropped it on the chat. Oh, yeah. Look at a newly established business, a site with minimum budget, what free tools are there? Okay, cool. I think exactly what, what, uh, what I'm going to go into now, um, we'll, we'll answer that. Um, and uh, yeah, we may have some other comments on that. So, yeah, so what you can use right now, um, I would recommend. So, number one is Google Keyword Planner. So in Google Ads, there's a module that is absolutely free to sign up for um, that you basically can get a whole bunch of insights around you know, the types of keywords. So when I'm talking about keywords, you know, when people are typing in Google search, um, you know, the actual words that, that people use to look for, look for things. Um, you can get a ton of insights from how much volume of searches there are going on with keywords and some forecasts into the future. This is really beneficial if you, re I mean, a lot of people use it specifically in paid search or for paid media, but in general analysis, it's really good because you can get a real good idea of the actual um, demand or interest in a certain field or product just by getting the data on how people are searching and you know the, the trend of, of, is it increasing or going down over time? Um, very similarly, uh, Facebook has an audience planner, um, which is also free. You sign up for for an advertising account, which is just a matter of a few a few, a few tick boxes and, and and setting up an account. Um, it's also free to get to this point. Uh, so before you even advertise or put budget through, but you can start using Facebook's audience audience planner to create to find out how many people have certain interests in certain fields. So I mean, you can, for example, put in the the, the country that you're in. You could say uh, you can find the the breakdown of men versus women that are interested in certain or the volume of people that have expressed interest in certain um, categories or products, etc. Um, and it's really helpful to know, you know, to work out how big your audience potentially is um, when, when looking to advertise online, even if it's not specifically on, on Facebook. Uh, but the insight is, is definitely, definitely, definitely valuable. Um, the example there that I've got is just on the right hand side, I was looking in South Africa people between 18 and 65 that are interested in car insurance and also have an interest in new cars. So um, potentially are in the market currently for car insurance. And there was a whole bunch of, of insight and there was more below that. Very similarly, um, LinkedIn has an audience campaign builder. Also completely free before you even put a campaign live, you can go in and chuck a few audiences in there exactly the same as, as Facebook start uh, specifying what the audience makeup you need, so the kinds of things that they're interested in. And you can really break down, in this case, uh, a lot more information about the seniority levels of people and what kinds of jobs they have, uh, where they are in the country, et cetera. So um, I would definitely recommend you know, checking this out if, you, if you, you're, what you're selling is more of a business to business type, type thing. Um, Google Trends, also a very, very powerful tool. It's absolutely free. Uh, literally, it's, uh, you can Google Google Trends and go to you'll you'll see this um this uh this search box. And all this is is very similar to Google Keyword Planner. You type in a topic or keyword, and it'll tell you the average um, increase or decrease. It'll show you the trend of 
what that keyword is doing over time. Uh, and you can break it down by a certain country, region, et cetera. Um, but it also gives you a few other interesting things. So, I mean, for example, in this example, I literally just typed in coronavirus. It's topical. It has a pretty specific trend. I was looking in South Africa only. And of course, you can see that the trend is, is uh, skewing towards uh, increases and decreases based off of uh, the spikes uh, you know, and the different waves. But you can do this with your business, of course, and your products and see, is their interest growing? Is interest declining? Are there different kinds of complementary products that are doing better that you could latch onto? Um, or the trends that are associated with your, with your product that, that, you could, that you could jump onto? And if you see on the right hand side there, that's, that's where you'll probably get a lot of insight for a small business. Um, you could put in your product, but you'll get some related topics that people are speaking about with regards to your keyword or topic or business. And you also get related queries. So what the, what the most uh, relevant queries are at the moment right now in Google searches that people are looking at. And of course, uh, interested by region. So finding out where, where people are actually, are actually searching the most. Another piece of information that I, this is something I created with Google data myself. I will give you guys a link to this, to this at the end of the presentation, um, but is the COVID mobility report data, which I think is an important one now with the specific uh, environment we're in. And what the COVID mobility data is, is Google basically put together a bunch of information around uh, uh, how people's movement to actual physical locations. Um, so like going to retail and rec recreation places, parks, workplaces, et cetera. And what they did is they've got an, uh, a bunch of information to say, at this time, compared to before COVID time, how different is our, is our, our behavior? So, I mean, a good example there is uh, in, in this slide, I mean, the first, the first line graph there, retail and recreation. You can see at the beginning of the COVID trend, people were going far, far less to, to, um, to, uh, to uh, retail and recreation places. And it slowly continued, again, taking some dips when different waves and different lockdown reg regulations came into being in South Africa. So this is a dashboard that I've created. I'm going to give you guys access to it fully. Um, and although you're looking at South African data now, it has the ability to drill down into any country you want. You can definitely use this to work out whether there's opportunity with specific products um, and your business. And then finally, of course, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of this. I'm sure you're potentially using it, but Google Analytics is by far, I would say, the best web analytics platform for a small business to start off with. I mean, especially the new offering of Google Analytics 4, um, which is a nuanced or a new version of analytics. Um, just it really, really focuses on a small business's needs of analytics because it is incredibly simple to set up. And a lot of the work that used to go into tracking some key events, like you know, people submitting forms on a website, people scrolling down pages, people contacting you, those things that we used to have to do as analytics practitioners are built into this Google Analytics as a standard when you just implement one piece of script or one code onto your site that a developer can probably do in arguably 10 minutes. Uh, or yourself, for that matter, if you're doing a, a, templatized, uh, a templatized website. So I would highly recommend implementing Google Analytics 4. It has a lot of really, really good benefits, and it's completely free. On that note, also, I've got a link here to a training session that we did as Jellyfish um, on Google Analytics 4. And if you have been using analytics in the past, it will tell you about some of the functionality and, and the benefits of, of it and how to do some things uh, and how to set it up. So definitely, I'll be giving you that link. If you don't get this presentation, I'll be sending the links in the chat. Um, and yeah, that, that is it. I mean, to, to wrap up really quickly, I just wanted to give you some, some last minute links and, and, and next steps. Um, and I think some of, the, some of my colleagues may have spoken about this before. I'm actually in chat submitting all the links you probably would want um, right now. But I would highlight Google Skillshop. So if you haven't seen it already, it's a, it's a link that uh, Google provides free resources for all of their products, not only analytics, but complementary products too. And you can get qualified in those. It has really, really in-depth training. Um, then also another link that you can follow there is the Google demo accounts. So if you wanted to see the kinds of information that comes into Google Analytics for any kind of business, 
Google has a bunch of accounts that you can access for free, see their data, can't break anything. You can just go and analyze Google's web store data and, and see the kinds of information you can get. And then, of course, finally, I put a link there for creating your own Google Analytics account. Um, and you can literally click the link here or in the chat that I just posted and you set up an account for yourself for absolutely, absolutely for free. Um, and then there's also links throughout the presentation or some other links I put in the chat there that you can access um, a bunch of other tools. And that is it for me. Uh, sorry, I know I've gone way over time, but um, thank you guys for listening. Um, and I hope it was useful. Does anybody have any questions or anything that you'd want to you know, pick up from the, the, the session or anything that you feel I missed that you really wanted to get out of this session? I think Etienne said he had a couple of questions. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to get. <laughs> Just like a uh, thought I had is, what would be a um, good initial time frame before starting to actually analyze data? Or a initial time frame for tracking before you start analyzing the data? Good question. Um, I think. It is, a, it is a little bit of a difficult one because it depends on a, on a few things, like the type of business, you know, is, is, it, is it like, is the analysis you're trying to do about, I mean, a simple example would be if you're trying to show seasonality for a business um, and you know whether there's a trend, you'd probably want an entire year's data. Mm. But that being said, I mean, if you're just trying to see what audiences are, are performing well or what kinds of people are coming to the site or, or how um, uh, campaigns are working if you're doing digital marketing, um, I think it, 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 the only thing you need to look at is how much volume you're getting. Because, of course, you don't want to cast an insight off of 10 people. You know, there's a higher probability that somebody could be an outlier that does really, really well or really, really badly and weighs that down. Mm. So I, I would probably never make any general insight off of less than 100 uh, data points or 100 people. Um, so for most, <coughs> most general, like, conversion stuff, that would probably be at least a month to two months of data if it's mm. the first time you've set, set, set up uh, tracking. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's very specific to what you want to actually track. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, for example, if you just want to see how many people and what kinds of people are coming to your site, I mean, landing on your site is a very um, uh, easy metric to get a lot of information on and the kinds yeah. of pages people go to. But if you compare that to how many leads you get on your site through a form, you know, it might take a lot longer because not every person submits a lead. Okay, so 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 I take it in that 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 just gets back to your tracking plan is is, is important because you need to know what to track in terms of how long to track and then do what to analyze. Yeah, yeah, that's that's why I stress like, like, start starting with like your your main KPI. I mean, the best example, especially with you, Etienne, you said you're doing a you you starting a digital marketing business, and that is. Mm. Um, if you're looking at running a campaign, the key thing you'd want to identify is what are those conversion points on the website that are that are going to say, hey, this campaign worked and we got a lead or we got a sale mm -hmm. for a customer. And even if you, you literally have those two things, so people coming to the site and what page they went to and them ending in a conversion, that's enough to at least give you some insights into um, mm -hmm. the difference between just general people on the site versus good performing people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Joachim, that brings me to my last question then is um, for, okay, just from my point of view as a small startup, if you want to call it that way, or smaller agencies, um, would it be a better idea to, or would it be viable to actually outsource it to some, somebody like, you, like yourself or your company, or try to get in it, into it by, by oneself, because uh, starting your own business, you, need, you, you want to get into everything. So it just gets somewhat overwhelming. So would it be a good idea to outsource the data analysis initially? What, what I would say is at the beginning, especially if you, you're focusing on, on, on paid media. Um, so again, I think I mentioned before, I started in paid media and taught myself the analytics side. And that was because mm. I did the analytics because I wanted to reinforce my campaigns that I was running. So mm. I, I would recommend trying to do it, even if it's, I, I mean, again, I know this is probably overwhelming. It seems like I've spoken about doing grand analyses and like having tons of data. But mm. even if it's just so once a month you can check more than, okay, this paid search campaign did well, but actually what did it result in on the site? 
I, I think it's important um, to know what you're optimizing towards and trying to track it yourself. If the job, for example, if you are offering analytics as a standalone service where analysis is the product, then um, then I, 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 I would I would adjust adjust just that statement that I made mm. and say, okay, well, mm. you would have to have a defined skill set in yeah. analysis. Twitter. Yeah, yeah, because I think obviously initially it's just going to be let's call it a very over overview type of, of analysis. Uh, but I suppose as one gets along, in whether you, you're going to get into more detailed analysis, the better you get at it. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think I mean, with, with anything, <laughs> even even uh, never mind with with just knowing more in the industry, with any client, especially again, you working as an agency and with clients, um, you always start a lot higher level. You can't you can't get that like micro granularity insight yeah. about the business until you've gotten through like the general stuff. You know. Uh, mm. Is a product mm. better with males or females? Is it is it better at a certain time of the month or day of the week? You know, and that's yeah. something you can do pretty simply. And I think better analysis comes from knowing the business better and what it needs, mm. less less than specifically knowing crazy data um, methods or like yeah. data science. You know. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No problem at all. Thanks for the questions. <laughs> sure. Does anybody else have any have any questions? For the record there, I've also shared in, in all those links above there, and I'm sure you guys will get the deck afterwards, my um, LinkedIn contacts and all that kind of stuff. Please do feel free to like just shoot questions across my way. I'm more than happy to help with the basic like fundamentals on this kind of stuff and, and so, some some general mentorship type things. So so yeah. Thank you everyone for in. Um, if there are more questions, please just drop this contact. You can reach out to him if you have any other personal or business related issue that you need help with. I've also dropped the feedback form. You guys have access to this as well. So if there are any other comments or feedback that you need, you can drop it here. But all in all, thank you very much, Eddie, for this wonderful session. And if you have no other questions, I guess that's about time. Cool. Thank you so, oh, thanks so much. Yeah. But right. I, 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 I will send you. I will send you the stack with all the links uh, straight no off. No problem. No problem. That's fine.